guess when I was really, really young, probably six, five, somewhere around there. I grew up in the Midwest, so we have plenty of frogs in Wisconsin. So I was always frog catching back then. But I got into frogs not so much because I'm interested in frogs, but because I'm interested in parasites. But mainly my interest is, is what lives inside frogs. Frogs are both a, are kind of a keystone species in that a lot of things rely on frogs both as prey and predator. And so looking at their parasites really shows ecological interactions that I wouldn't necessarily see looking at other animals. So it's the wood frog. That's our uh, main species of, of frog. We do have a couple species down in the southeast, but when we talk about Alaskan frogs, we usually are only talking about the wood frog. But yeah, frogs are everywhere. They're definitely through prolific in this area. You know, if you walk through the, the trails at UAF, you will be hearing frogs during the spring and you'll easily find them if you look for them. I pretty much walk around and wait for them myself to almost step on them. And then they jump and then I can see them and then I can pick them up. Where I go is actually small little islands that have, you know, willow cover and small grasses. So I'll see them hopping through the grasses and around the willows. So it's really easy, nice, open plain area. And so I'll be walking around in these plains, and I'll pretty much almost step on one. They'll hop away, and that's when I can grab them, when, they, when I see the movement. Well, they're mainly feeding, you know, hunting. So you look for places that are really buggy. They're going to eat anything they can grab, you know, worms, other insects, spiders, anything that's small, and they can get into their mouth leaves happening so they have this very short period of time to freeze and to create enough glucose to survive freezing but what's happening is at night we get below freezing and we get those frosts but then during the day it warms up and so these wood frogs are thawing a little bit during the day and then at night they're freezing again so they're freezing and then thawing freezing and thawing and by freezing and then thawing a little bit they're able to thaw enough we believe to access more glucose into their cells so they're, in, in a lot of ways, lengthening the time they're freezing by freezing and thawing over a week or two in September and October. They dig little things called hibernacula about two inches deep in the ground, and they're looking to uh, hibernate as close as possible to the water. So they're usually, you know, 10 yards off the, the shore or, some, or so in the leaf litter. What happens is they come out of hibernation and they have now all this glucose that they're trying to uh, recover because they're trying, to, they're trying to get it out of their cells but at the same time they don't want to expel all of it but a lot is lost the year, through the urea. And then after they've woken up and thawed out and lost some glucose they go breed which is also very taxing. So they lose energy then through breeding, and they've lost energy through freezing, and now it's time to rebuild for the, the coming winter, and also for the, the females to start producing eggs in preparation of, of next spring too and mating.